We create art when we attempt to capture our experience to share with others. Too broad? Well, how would you define it? We readily acknowledge the different forms of art that enjoy broad historical recognition. Works of paint, tile, thread, clay, steel, air reverberations, to name a few of our favorite media. But what about truly abstract media? Isn't a poem a work of art in the medium of our natural languages? Even if we layer the abstract art form onto the artful sounds and shapes of the physical forms representing the words. And can we write poems from non-natural languages? And are we so certain what is a non-natural language? These various media all seem to be accompanied by different sets of rules for different vocational games, setting the expected boundaries of creativity, boundaries that are there to provide a backdrop to clarify the significance of a choice, but sometimes they're also to be broken. At the very least, boundaries are dynamic in their formation which breakages are lauded, and which are shamed. Well, we're constantly reviewing and peering as a collective search space, peer reviewing. And despite how we define common games, a rule for an objective, let alone a winner, is not necessarily required for the rule set of a medium of expression. Indeed, the best rule sets of the arts and their playful instantiations do not specify this in the least. So why aren't the sciences and mathematics art forms as well? Well, of course they are. We establish rules for these disciplines, but continually rewrite them as well as we come to understand everything, including ourselves, more and more through the values they produce. Oh, they are disciplines rather than masterworks. Tell me again how an artist who has honed their craft for decades is not practicing a discipline. And tell me again how a mathematician or theorist conjecturing and playing with ideas is not creating art when they both continually ask themselves, is this right for what I'm trying to accomplish? For the irreducible complexity I'm trying to capture, does this capture the world that I see, not necessarily with my eyes? What are thought experiments, if not creative experiential works that bring us new insights? Or what we build on a tabletop to try to capture something novel in an optics lab or a sculpture studio? When we get to where we find a new realization or even a belief in something based on our process, perhaps we find a proof that seems true, a result that seems real beyond the spurious correlations. This feels like a discovery, and it could be. We may have stumbled into something with shared meaning, reinterpretable by countless possible rules we or others may or may not apply to it. Like works of art, ultimately theorems and theories are our creations as well. As we can never be sure which is unshakably correct, where an error may lurk, misfitting the targets of their forms as models. But how much is this even the point? In the freer arts, we often set the rule that unintentional moves and misfits are never errors. It's more about what these works do. Sometimes we even interpret errors as beautiful discoveries. And in found art, like a discovered theorem, we intentionally and meaningfully recognize forms that we had no hand in creating ourselves, except that we are somehow part of this novel composition. As we bring our awareness to it, and share it with the rest. We chip away or weather to reveal as much as we constructively make 
in any discipline. Many philosophers have described ways of understanding our inability to grasp absolute truth through the centuries. And we will probably continue to need many more ways to discover how wrong we are about this or that. We do our best together, and we've never had enough. We are relentless in our pursuit. So it seems the search to more perfectly capture the universe in a moment of truth will never end, whether in the beauties of music, visual art, dance, or that yearning for objectivity we seek in science. We torture ourselves with this concept of object. Fortunately, art is its own therapy, and we cannot escape its embraces either. The models we build to predict various subsystems of the universe are held in a cocoon braided from the scientific method. But all of it is wrapped in layers of artful philosophy and creativity. We honor an incomplete assumption and an axiom, or three, and carry on to build structural understanding. Even when we test to verify and validate our best works clinging most tightly to those patterns of exchange ringing throughout the physical all, we make artful decisions about where to prioritize our finite and limited resources. We do our best to find the most independent modes of evaluation when everything is ultimately connected. By definition, if part of our universe, nothing is truly separated over the fullness of time to include our most platonic ideas of ideals. Our few counts of time that we spend to spend on what we can are our fleeting choices. Our choices are never unlimited, but there is always something. Through them, we relate and hear and play and hold and journey to seek more. Our jewels of science are some of our most beautifully cut works in all our practices of art. They bring us a great deal of new possibilities, including some dangers and wild opportunities that can throw us off our balance. Combinatorial game theory teaches us that non-equilibria have ways of finding either end games or new beginnings. What can we do to strengthen the wisdom and our most serious of moves, sorting those truest beauties from what will end us, or at least what makes the concept of us possible. All of our choices in time are always mathematically imperfect. If we define perfection to mean completeness, but the sciences of life and math and machines and space-time are not our only works most beautiful to this pursuit. Actions, marks, and words, all perhaps not so different ways to structure space-time, those few complex threads we have to weave. Their sequences may move us with their truth and beauty even if we only come to understand them from our relative context and our relative frame, each instance unique. We learn of our experience in high-dimensional kaleidoscopes as little islands of perceptions wrapped in contexts of layers and rules, dynamic in their formation and breakage, we play on to survive and persist. As we do not know what is beyond our knowing, what a shame to presume a particular rule 
where winning meant a race to the end. For all we know, a beautiful structure as a product of frames might never form again. The universe, even with its vast stores of memories, may experience true informational loss to the degeneracies of hollow forms. Yet at the same time, the true substance of it all, what finds these structures in itself, may remain invariantly conserving the information of each new energetic story spun and told. Perhaps they all start very much the same, once upon a space-time. But then the possibilities of novelty brim along every edge and turn. Even if the greatest stories must come to an end, we still hear the echoes from yesterdays. I certainly don't pretend to have those hardest answers sought. And who really can? From the oldest to our newest art forms, the open ones share in a most general description. As the art of asking better questions of us all.